Hello and welcome back to the Lincoln Loco. Today, we've got the one game for you. We're playing Sheffield FC, the oldest football club in the world in the whatever league we're in. It's the Evo Stick Northern Premier Division 1 East. I think that's what it is. That's I think that is what it is. Again, it's a mouthful. If you've got a good idea of what we should call this league, please let me know in the comment section. The best one, you'll you'll win a prize. Brackets, you won't win a prize. Right then, a lot to talk about in this episode. Um, I think we'll start off with what's happened since you were last here, um, which has been a, a mixed bag of results. Uh, we started off really well. Obviously, we, we won last episode, a 1-0 win against Spawn United. Very, very good. Uh, we then won two games in a row, a 2-0 win against Wispeach Town, an own goal from Luke Wilson, and then a goal from youngster Kevin Hemagu or Hem Hemaju. I've not quite decided how to pronounce it yet. So here he is. This is Kevin, uh, if you've not seen him yet. I've not shown him in an episode yet because he, he's, uh, he's not featured yet in an episode. But two-star current ability, five-star potential, very nice to see. Uh, has got some good attributes where they matter. Finishing is pretty good. Uh, Composure is pretty good. He could have better anticipation and off the ball. I've actually seen Kevin play in real life. And when I saw him on the pitch, I looked at him and everything about him, I thought, you know, this guy looks like the real deal. He looks like a really good footballer. You know, he, you know he's big, he's well-built, looks like he's got some decent pace on him. Unfortunately, when I saw him on the ball... I, well, it's a different story. Now, I'm probably being a bit harsh on him. I've been a bit harsh on him. Uh, he's a good player. He scored a goal, actually, when I was there the other day. Uh, but just sometimes you go to head the ball and it would hit his back instead of its head sort of thing. Um, but no, he must be a decent player. He's a decent player. I, I mean, he scored a goal. He must be a decent player. And he's, more importantly, he's a decent player in football manager because he scored a few goals for me. So this is Kevin. He scored the goal in that game, which was very good. Uh, maybe see him in this episode. We might see him. Uh, depends what happens. Um, so after that Wispeach Town win, we went and played Marks United. And we won 3-0 away from home. Paul Grimes with another goal. He's the one that scored in the game against Spalding United in episode one. Uh, Cam Smith on my left wing got a goal. And again, Kevin with another one. So Kevin... He looks like he's decent football manager. After these three wins, though, things have gone downhill a little bit. Uh, we went to Greasley. Uh, in fact, we played them at home, actually, and we lost 2-0 in a really poor game there. Really didn't play very well for some reason. I'm not entirely sure why. Uh, we then played Stocksbridge Park Steels, a 2 all draw there. And unfortunately, they equalised ended up with a penalty uh, just before half-time. Um, it was a bit of a contentious penalty. I wasn't sure if it really should have been a penalty or not. So we do feel a bit hard done by in that game. And then last time out, we played Loughborough Dynamo at home again. And once again, we lost this game. But this game was frustrating. If we can click on the result, I'll show you the match stats. Uh, I believe Loughborough Dynamo had two shots on target in that game. And of course, those two shots on target were going to go in the back of the net. They're, they're two shots on target compared to our four shots on target and 17 shots in total. We really did dominate this game. We deserve to win it. Unfortunately, though, scoreline says otherwise. Hopefully today, though, we are going to redeem ourselves away from home against Sheffield. We need to get another win on the board. Uh, the three wins, one draw and two losses leave us ninth in the table right now on 10 points. Uh, only three points off Stamford in second, though. Bryhouse United, or Bryhouse Town, rather, getting off to a great start this season on 17 points, five wins, two draws. But it's still pretty tight across the rest of the table, I've got to say. Uh, Sheffield, who we play today, down in 18th which is interesting. Hopefully, we should get the win against them today. But we did play against Lifford Dynamo last time and we lost to them. So that wasn't very good. In fact, they were actually, they were just ahead of uh, Sheffield, actually. They, they were down in 17th. They moved at one place with that win against us. But uh, again, it's a team that are down that side of the table. Really, we should be beating them if early indications and results are to be believed. And it didn't happen. So we have to be careful that it doesn't happen against Sheffield today. So that's what's happened since you were last here. Other than that, there's actually been uh, some interesting stuff happening. We've made a transfer signing. Um, and it's not on the left-hand side of the pitch. Now, I've been trying to find players on the left-hand side of the pitch, but it's very difficult. So it's difficult for a number of reasons. One, because there aren't really that many around that are suited to our needs and level and, and the amount of money that we have left in the transfer budget and wage budget and things like that. Uh, the second reason is we don't really have many staff members. Now, we've got one director of football. He was at the club when I arrived. I'm not quite sure why we need one at this level, but we, we have one. Uh, and I had to sign a chief scout because we have no scouts. And we don't have any more money now to get any more scouts. And we have no money to either get a physio. So if we get injured players, then, well, quite frankly, I'm going to have to deal with it. Uh, and in terms of scouting, we've only got one guy going around trying to scout every single player, as well as also scout the team that we're playing next. Uh, so it's not great. We do need more money. The money situation, though, it's already, as, as predicted, already gone down. We're now in the red by £2,000. So... And that's never going to get worse, really. If you look at the projection again, um, only mine is £116,000 now. So it's not quite as bad as it was uh, in the first episode of this season. We're also over our wage budget now with the new player that I signed as well. We'll show you him in a minute. Uh, he, he, he is kind of needed a little bit, but 
He's not a left-hand sided player, which is what we really did need. We do have a fair bit of money left in the scouting budget though. Perhaps we can, can we actually adjust that? I'm not quite sure where we adjust, to be fair, it's only 7,000 pounds. Like that's not gonna make much of a difference in the wage budget. So we may as well leave that as it is. Uh, we do have 1,200 in the transfer budget, but again, I can't alter that because what's that? An extra, not much per week. So there's no point really putting that in. It's, it's just not looking, we need more money. Please, if someone wants to donate some money to the club, that'd be great. So here we are at the transfer page. These ones are the ones that were brought in, not by me. They're just sort of ones that were done in the database. So ignore those four. I've not done those. The one I have done, though, is bringing in Jason Palling in on a free transfer. He is a right back. There we go. He's a right back. Uh, the best right back at the club now with three and a half star current ability and five star potential which is very interesting. Uh, we did need a right back. We were playing a centre back at right back actually. So it's now meant that we can move Wilson who was playing at right back into centre back where he's a bit more naturally suited and perhaps a little bit better to play there. Uh, so Palling comes in instead. Now he was a Sheffield United uh, youngster. Uh, obviously didn't impress there too much as he too with there. But has sort of gone around the South Yorkshire, North Nottinghamshire uh, sort of scene. Alfreton, Stockbridge Park, Steels, Matlock. Uh, so actually that's Derbyshire as well, I think. So he's actually been around a fair bit, Jason, compared to the rest of Lincoln squad that sort of sticks around Lincolnshire. This guy's a bit of an outsider, so he might have a bit of trouble actually setting into the squad because of that. Looking at the social groups, he, well, he's not an outsider. Only Dickens is an outsider. He doesn't get on with anyone, apparently. He's a bit of a loner. Uh, Wilson and McGann have a secondary social group because obviously they've got a secret gang. Um, who, who is Phil McGann? I don't think I've ever seen... Oh, he's a goalkeeper. He's a backup goalkeeper that's never really going to get used because we, we've got Michael Emery and what's better than Michael Emery? Now, Palling seems to have actually settled into that core social group quite quickly. He's only been here a matter of days. So, I mean, fair play. They, they've accepted the outsider. Uh, we've got a very progressive group of people at Lincoln United, apparently, who who like people who've come from outside of Lincolnshire. So, uh, Jason has settled in quite nicely. To be fair, he's got he's got some good physicals and some good, good mentals. You know, his work rate determination is pretty good. His penalty taking for a right back is, is surprisingly good. Either way, he's coming in as the first choice right back now and he's gonna start in today's game against Sheffield. So let's get on to that now. Uh, we've done enough talking, we've done enough messing around. Let's get straight into today's game. Uh, we're switching up formation today. We've played the 4-4-2 every single game. It worked three times and then hasn't worked so well the next three times. So we're gonna switch it up today uh, for this fluid counter style, uh, fluid counter attack style of play. Uh, slightly a little bit more complicated in terms of our shape, but I think the player should be okay to deal with it. So Emery stays in goal. Oh, I don't want him as a sweeper keeper. We want him as a goalkeeper on defend. No nonsense stuff there. Palling then comes in at right back, making his debut today, uh, which means that Wilson can move across into that uh, centre defensive role alongside Michael Jacklin. Scott Matthews stays on the left-hand side of defence as well. We are looking for more left backs and, and left wingers as well, uh, but there's... <laughs> It's a bit difficult, I've got to say. Toyne moves into that CDM role today. He's playing as a CDM with Dickens in front of him as a ball winning midfielder and Norris playing as a Carrillo, uh, sort of like the box to box midfielder sort of role. Uh, Smith is on the left-hand side, Callum Smith, with Cotton on the right. Now, Cotton is a player that, to all intents and purposes, should be amazing, but really, really hasn't performed. His average rating has been 6.56 this season so far which has been atrocious, really, considering how good he's meant to be and how good I've seen him play in real life. He should be doing better than that, so I'm disappointed with that. Uh, and top goal scorer, Paul Grimes, is starting up front today. Uh, we've got Connor Robinson on the bench, and actually, I think Kevin played... Well, Kevin kind of has played a little bit. I think we're, we're going to swap Kevin with, with Josh Nichols, actually. Uh, Josh Nichols coming off the bench. Kevin's going to be on the bench. He's played very well when he's played as well, so big old Kev is uh, hopefully going to come on at some point in today's game and maybe grab a goal or two. Right then, kickoff is upon us here. We are away from home in Sheffield today at the oldest football club in the world, Sheffield FC. I always think it's a little bit sad though. You know, Sheffield, the oldest football club in the world, they're, they're not the most famous. You know, Sheffield United and Sheffield Wednesday are more famous than Sheffield, probably you could argue. I always think it'd be quite nice to see an actual, you know, Sheffield FC do quite well in the Football League, but... It, for whatever reason, it hasn't transpired. I could be, I could be being an idiot. Perhaps Sheffield never wants to be big. Perhaps that's part of the the the, the charm of the club. Perhaps I don't know. But uh, either way, hopefully they're not going to be too good today as we take them on. As a uh, Chapman is on the ball on the edge of the area for them. They're in the red, of course, as they come forward. Yates on the ball out towards K. Chapman once again. They're playing it around quite nicely on this left hand side of the pitch or their left hand side of the pitch. They managed to put the cross in. Wilson clears it, but only as far as Chapman again. We need to get on this ball. We're soaking the pressure quite nicely. 
but I'd like to see us win the ball back as Yates has been put forward. Emery with a decent save there, but that was a nice little attack from Sheffield. We have to be careful of that. Straight away, though, another highlight. Sheffield trying to build from the back once again. Again, coming down this left-hand side, or they're going a bit more centrally through Chapman once again. He seems to be a bit of a playmaker out there. The ball does get through to Gregory, unfortunately, and Newsham puts it in the back of the net. Mark Newsham. Uh, I believe he used to play for Boston United, actually. I think I've heard his name before. Unfortunately, then, we've gone 1-0 down, and that was a real defensive mistake there on our left-hand side. The Pence, Matthews and Jacqueline, I think, getting a bit confused who's meant to get the ball. It allowed their man to get through, and Yates, uh, and Gregory, sorry, put the ball into Newsham, and he's punished us, which, I mean, it's not a great start to the game, is it? We start the season off so well, I'm not quite sure where it suddenly all started to fall apart a little bit, because I thought we looked pretty solid. We didn't concede a goal in those first three games. We played really well. Uh, we scored six goals in three games, didn't concede anything, and then suddenly we haven't been put, able to put a win together, although Paul Grimes has heard me as he gets on the end of a Callum Smith cross. His fourth goal of the season now for Grimes. He puts it in the back of the net, and I feel like we need to give him a nickname, because I feel like he's going to be a bit of a, an icon in this first season at least. He's getting on a little bit now. He's 40, 34 years old, not 40, 34 years old. He may not last for too much longer. He may retire soon, so we need to get a cool nickname for him. I want to say grimy, but like, you know, that doesn't sound, that's not that nice, is it? You know, oh, it's, it's old grimy. It just sounds a bit disgusting as Cotton puts it just over the bar from the corner. He was absolutely unmarked there. Really should have done better, I think. We approach half time then. The team on top, you've got to say, nine shots, 55% uh, position. We've been the team on top. I think we're unlucky to actually not be winning this game so far. But it's a decent-ish first half. We'll take it. We're still in the game, of course. So I'm going to go aggressively. I'm far from pleased from what I've just seen. Uh, my Clemory looks a bit stressed. Look, calm down, lad. Calm down. We'll go calmly. Um, I'm happy your points out there today so far. He still looks stressed. Look, Mike, calm yourself down a little bit. I'm not trying to bite your head off right now. We're just. I'm just getting angry and riled up at the squad, trying to motivate you all. You know, don't take it so seriously. This is when he's going to concede like six goals now because he's too stressed and he's thinking about other things and then all of a sudden we're 6-1 down. I don't know if I want to make a tactical change or not in this half. I don't know if I want to go back to that 4-4-2 because we are we are creating a few chances and we are, we are keeping possession, but I think we are a little bit more dangerous in that 4-4-2. We did create 17 chances. We had 17 shots last game, to be fair, with the 4-4-2. So perhaps it is worth going back to it for the last half hour or so of a game. I think it, I think we might do it, actually. So back to the 4-4-2. Toyn's going to have to come off the pitch then. We're going to bring Kev on for him. Kevin is going to come on as a poacher. Hopefully grab another goal or two. That'd be quite good. Everyone else, I think I'm kind of happy with at the moment. In terms of ratings, uh, defensively, we're looking a bit shaky. Wilson not playing up to his full potential there. Rob Norris in central midfield not doing amazingly either. So we may bring someone on for him, although Andy Toyn has just come off the pitch and he can't actually play that box to box. We'll leave it for now. We'll leave it for now. Don't panic, Tom. Let's leave it for now. Uh, we have a highlight right now, actually, as well as Toyn is on the ball in the edge of the area just before we uh, we lose possession. Of course, Gascoigne now coming forward and Yates has a chance for Sheffield. There's so many men. Gascoigne... Where is the defence in that situation? Where was the defence? I've got to say, they've... <laughs> absolutely done us on the counter-attack there. That was a really poor defensive showing there. We need to do better than that. I think we need to go a little bit more attacking. We're going to go attacking with our with our style of play as well. We need to try... We've got 20 minutes to get back in this game. This has not been a great run of games. And this one, defensively, defensive mistakes have led to the two Sheffield goals. And it's not been good enough. I think what I'm going to do as well is we're going to bring on Connor Robinson for Paul Grimes. He scored his goal today, but he's looking a little bit tired out there. I want to bring a fresh face on the pitch. And then Tom Garrick, we can't really bring on. I, I, this is the thing. I want to bring someone on for Smith, but we haven't got anyone, which is frustrating. So I think to save Jacqueline uh, a red card and actually create a, you know, have a bit of a fresh face at the back, we're going to get Blunden on the back for, for Jacqueline. Hopefully this will change the game in our favour. We, if we can grab a point from this game at this stage of the game now, I'll be happy. But going into this game, I was desperate for a win. And clearly, I don't think it's going to happen. We're approaching the, the added time now. Three minutes of added time and nothing has... This second half has been very poor. We've only had three shots this second half. It's, it's not been great. We dropped down to 11th in the table now. As we've now lost to Sheffield, who were down... In, who were, this has been a bad game. Well, I'm not quite sure what's gone wrong then in the past few games. I'm not quite sure what has gone wrong. Aggressively, I'm far from pleased with that result. 
Uh, a few demotivated looking faces there as well, which is interesting. A few players looking a little bit stressed. That might be something we have to monitor going forward. We can't be too harsh, perhaps, because players are starting to get a little bit cross. But at the same time, if we're not winning games when we should be winning them, they deserve a bollocking. It's very diplomatic of me, that, isn't it? Very, very diplomatic of me. Well, we've been taught a lesson in that game. Uh, taught a history lesson by the oldest club in the world. What, what a reference that is. We're taught a history lesson by the oldest club in the world. Wow. Not a great result, though. We do lose 2-1. Uh, Palling makes his debut. He's got 10 months left on his £80 a week contract at Ashby Avenue, which is actually uh, lower than what most players are on. Less than uh, Most players seem to spend £100. He's only on £80. He's actually not earning that much. I mean, it's only £20 less, but it's you know £20 less per week over a year probably does amount to quite a bit actually works out to about 960 pounds less per year than the rest of the players so that's that's a, a thousand pounds or so is a significant amount of money at this kind of level well it's it's not great really it's not great next game we have uh, is, a, is a cup game it's a weird cup the the intergo dudeson league cup so or intergro dudeson league cup uh, I'm not entirely sure like what qualifies us for getting to this. It's probably like a regional sort of thing. In fact, looking at this, it is a regional sort of thing. Um, we're in it in the first round. We're playing some team called Radcliffe. We're not going to show it next episode because I don't think it's going to be that interesting. Uh, and there's not really much prize money. We should be... I feel like we should be in the FA Cup. But I'm not sure if it's... Let's have a quick look at this. FA Cup. Second... Oh, the second qualifying round has been drawn. Now, are we, are we in this or... <laughs> No, why Why are we not in this? Like, there are teams that are, I feel like we have to be upper level. Like, obviously in real life we would be in it, but I feel like for this database and football manager in general, we have to be upper level to play in the FA Cup because games for Trinity are there. Uh, but I feel like they're in the wrong, oh, they're not in the wrong league, aren't they? They're in the right league. Or are they? I feel like games for Trinity have been hard done by you. I'm sure they're in the Vanarama National League, North. I'm sure they are. Oh, no. They, they, they did get relegated last season. Uh, fair play. I, I had no idea. Either way, we don't appear to be in the FA Cup when we should be, but I think that's because in Foot Manager it starts at the second qualifying round when we would actually go in at the first qualifying round. So perhaps that's a little bit of an error with the database. Uh, we won't worry about it too much because it's not like we're going to win the FA Cup anytime soon. Uh, but it, it would be kind of nice for the prize money. So we have to get promoted first before we actually start to enter the, 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 the FA Cup. Anyway, my point was, we have a cup game, but it's not that important, so I'm not going to show it just yet. If we get further than that cup, we'll start to show more games, but that one's not too important. Uh, so next episode, then, we're going to go, I reckon, for maybe Morpeth and Stamford, I think. Two home games there. Stamford, again, another sort of local one uh, for Lincoln. I think they're just inside Lincolnshire, Stamford, so that'd be a good local derby. Morpeth Town are actually the team at the top of the table in real life, actually, and in this league, uh, in this version of the, the game, we're, they're in second right now. So Morpeth, a pretty decent side. Uh, Stamford also up there as well, so that should be quite good. So next episode could be a pretty exciting one. So thank you very much for watching today's episode. It's not been the result we wanted, but I hope you have enjoyed it nonetheless. If you have done, make sure you do drop a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel if you're new around here with notifications turned on. And I will see you next time for some more Lincoln Loco action.